The topic today I'd like to talk about it goes back to some observations uh, years ago by Spottiswood that there is a certain time of day when ESP reception uh, is better than average by a considerable amount and offer a possible explanation of that based on uh, some of the um, uh, recent Russian work on what they call torsion, which is not very well understood in the U.S. Uh, that's my background, and we won't dwell on that, but uh, as a physicist, um, that was my background, and I got into this weird stuff about 15, 20 years ago when I began realizing that there were observational anomalies that do apply to physics, and uh, our present Western science uh, can't really explain it. By and large, a lot of it gets um, overlooked. Uh, my new book, uh, Life Force, uh, 1,500 references, 400 figures, tries to pull together a lot of the evidence for uh, some of these anomalies in energy healing and, and the subjects like that. Uh, we have long-range effects that go on that is very difficult to explain by the Western scientific model. They don't weaken with distance. They pass through barriers, et cetera. There's quite a bit of data. My, my, uh, my simple model for, <laughs> for subtle energy is that um, it, it basically seems to affect other forces. It shows up in many different uh, guises and affects the other uh, basic uh, forces of physics. So these are the seven, the six blind scientists and the uh, subtle energy elephant. And uh, it appears in different ways. It's maybe one of the reasons why it's taken so long for Western science to seriously address subtle energy and develop a science of it. I know that uh, Uri Krohn and Joey Jones talked earlier this morning about a fifth force. That's one way to look at it. Another way is that it may uh, change the metric. It may change the background in which the other forces of physics operate. Uh, as you well know, there are plenty of, of experiments in recent years. Uh, can you hear me in the back? Am I loud enough in the back, by the way? I guess I am. OK, good. Uh, recent years, lots of data. The book, my book has lots and lots of examples of this, of experiments like Joy Jones' experiments um, and, and Uri Krohn, where Okay, good. I can, I'll take the, the, um, the other mic if that's okay with you. Can we do that? Or? <laughs> Is this okay instead? Is this a little bit better or, or not? Okay. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, this is some of the uh, Joy Jones experiments done with um, uh, HELA uh, cells and uh, long distance healing, just showing that over time, uh, this is a 10 year plus experiment, there's enormous amounts of data to show that um, real healing, uh, the, the lifetime of cells which have been damaged by gamma radiation is greatly enhanced with energy healing. It turns out not to matter uh, how far away you are uh, when sending this energy. Uh, the great uh, a Chinese Qigong master, Dr. Yan Jin, uh, began working with the National Physics Institute in China back in the 1980s. Uh, he's one of the very, very powerful uh, Qigong master who was discovered at age four. Um, the Physics Institute did things like the following experiment. This is decay of americium, radioactive uh, element has a certain decay rate, average, it's constant over time. Uh, we don't really know in the West much how to change how fast something decays. But if you ask the Qigong master, he could change, he could increase or decrease the decay rate uh, on command. And it did not matter how far away he was. This data here is 1,900 kilometers away. Uh, another uh, Qigong master, Dr. Jixig Li, uh, offices in uh, California as well as in China, experiments with uh, Penn State University was shown able to kill uh, cancer cells at a distance of over 2,000 miles uh, in an incubator, uh, petri dishes that he would uh, be told which petri dish to aim at and he could kill the cancer cells in that petri dish and not hurt the other ones. So the growth rates here of the control 
and the ones bending over are the growth rates of the ones he's sending his uh, chi energy at. These are um, also um, Raman spectra of water. Uh, similarly, the bonding can be changed by chi energy. Uh, laser beam intensity, again, uh, over distances. Uh, this also can be changed. But the bottom line is that in serious experiments with some of the people who are the best in the field, uh, very high signal-to-noise effects are observed. Um, one of the, uh, the, the most famous uh, Chinese-American scientists, Dr. Uh, Qian Hushen, uh, who immigrated with great fanfare a few years ago to, from the U.S. back to China, uh, started their rocket program, but um, before that, he was one of the founders of Jet Propulsion Lab at Caltech, named Person of the Year in 1988 by Aviation Week and Space Technology. His uh, evaluation of this series of experiments is as follows. These experimental results by Dr. Yan Jin and his co-workers are a first in the world. They unequivocally demonstrate that without touching substances, the human body can affect them and change their molecular structures and properties. They are new scientific discoveries and the prelude to a scientific revolution. So it's unlike any other force in physics, and it's a prelude to a scientific revolution. So um, as one of our jobs as, as scientists is to try to understand the nature of this force, how it behaves, and start to develop theories to explain it. Uh, in my book, I pull together the best evidence I can find from other prior scientists, von Reichenbach in Germany, Wilhelm Reich, Bill Tiller, Phil Callahan, many others. Uh, they reviewed there. The, the important reason I did that was to compare them to the Russian uh, data on torsion. There is a, a pretty good sized body of, of information uh, that, has, that did come out, um, but uh, it's partial. It's not complete, and I wanted to be able to compare it for sanity checks with other people's experiments to get a sense for how believable some of the data was. Nikolai Kozarev was the ori original discoverer of what they call torsion back in the 50s by observing double star systems. He calls it the physical component of time, the time density, which he concluded was being changed in some of these stellar processes. He says that the order is lost, the entropy increases in one system, but it can be transmitted by changing the density of time to the substance of the detector. So there's an effect here that can transmit and radiate through space. It affects elasticity, conductivity, the work function of electrons, many other physical properties. He postulated and proved in the lab that torsion is created in irreversible processes. It affects the flow of time and virtually every other physical process. Um, here's a quote from another of the Russian uh, torsion researchers. Um, from the late 1980s until the late 90s, Major experimental investigations were conducted that confirmed the theoretical predictions. It was established that torsion generators allow us not only to replicate all phenomena demonstrated by so-called psychics, but they are also able to demonstrate effects that were never demonstrated by any psychic. It's a far-reaching new technology, it appears to be, to me. Um, they were already known in the Soviet Union in 69, if you go back to the landmark book by Ostrander and Schroeder, written in 1970, they have an entire chapter on Kozarev. He talks about uh, the, this uh, force, uh, torsion, and how it behaves, and what he has observed at that time. Uh, I'm not going to go through this, but there's lots of evidence that um, anomalies which have been observed in physics uh, can be traced back to torsion effects in many cases. Um, one of the reasons we have this data available to us appears to be the political changes that happened in Russia in the early 90s. They went through what they call glasnost and perestroika. Uh, the funding at many labs, especially defense labs, was cut off. Uh, this, that the, they released their client states to become free countries, as you know. And um, a lot of the scientists suddenly had no funding. Their um, security restrictions uh, were released. They were able then free to publish their papers. They had no money to do so, but the internet was flooded at that time with a bunch of papers from work that had gone on over many years prior. 
uh, Dr. Ivan Shakparonov, one of the scientists in this group, made a comment in a paper that uh, his work was the coordination of eight scientific teams and 30 years of research, which culminated in this effort. So you get the impression when you begin looking over this data that there's a lot to it, a lot of research. And, and five minutes left, thank you. <laughs> um, one type of experiment that uh, verified uh, the basic and ideas of torsion is the following. This is a torsion pendulum in an airtight chamber on the left and right. Uh, and the left-hand side, you have a mass on a horizontal um, bar free to move as a torsion pendulum. If you take a, an irreversible process, like evaporation of acetone, for example, it is shown to exert a repelling force on the small mass at the end of the torsion pendulum. Any process that has an irreversible process from entropy increasing tends to cause a repulsion of the small mass. A process which has an entropy decreasing effect has the opposite effect on the mass. It causes an attraction force. So the Russians concluded there are left and right-handed forms of this energy. They call them left and right-handed torsion. The left-handed torsion has an attraction effect. The right-handed a repulsion effect. And um, the, here are some processes that produce the right-handed torsion. In Kozarev's terminology, they emit time. They're processes in which entropy is increasing, evaporating of acetone, a dying of a plant, melting ice, chemical reaction, sugar dissolving. Processes in which entropy uh, decreases at the source, stretching rubber band, ice freezing, etc. So you have two forms, two polarities of this energy. It's like the yin and yang. It appears to be the physical basis for the yin and yang of the Chinese uh, qi terminology. Uh, it also may well be the explanation for dark matter and dark energy because one has an attraction effect and one has a repulsion effect on matter. You can relate them to physical properties of magnets and other systems which have spin. I'm going to skip over some of this because of time. Tomsk University did a series of experiments verifying many of the basic aspects of torsion. The change, changing of, uh, of, of gyroscopes, for example, are good sources of torsion. They change the behavior of radiometers. Uh, if you reflect and concentrate this energy, you can cause changes of matter, changes of mass, changes of density of other materials. It changes things that in our Western science we would say you can't change. One interpretation would be it changes the nature of space-time itself, the, the, the zero-point energy in which everything else is happening. I'm going to skip ahead here. We have some recent papers by people like Volkamer showing that in chemical reactions in Germany in closed systems, uh, mass can change. The mass of the system actually changes. Uh, he presents it as something inexplicable, but actually it's predicted by the Russian torsion experiments and it's consistent with them. Uh, you can also concentrate this energy and um, look at astronomical objects. When you do, the Russians find that there are actually three peaks, not one. You get not only the retarded position of the object, which took the speed of light to get from there to here, but you get two other peaks, one for instantaneous propagation and one for advanced propagation. So it appears as though torsion offers uh, something that we haven't seen in Western physics, a phenomenon that, that behaves like the old uh, Feynman Wheeler paper that goes backward in time and it gives you a way to get holographic type effects where things that can travel backwards as well as forward in time. And I have one minute to get to the punchline here. The basic explanation of, uh, of the, the um, spotted wood data can be understood from three essential principles. Number one, according to Kozarev and some Western scientists, uh, left-handed torsion appears to be correlated with the increase of ESP or psychic ability, the ability to more accurately perceive uh, psychic messages. Um, that is part of it, and the other piece of it, and this is some of Spottiswood's data showing about a four-time increase at the two hours per day 
when uh, at 13.5 hours sidereal, when Virgo is overhead, Virgo and it turns out to be a very large concentration of dark matter, which by the Russian interpretation would be left-handed torsion. So it appears as though by putting these three ideas together, we can explain the 13.5 uh, hour peak in ESP reception, which would look something like this. Every day when Virgo happens to be overhead, we're getting a little extra of the left-handed torsion, which is increasing the effect. So it offers a physical basis for the fifth force referred to earlier. Uh, it may be able to explain long-range consciousness phenomena and many other uh, anomalies observed in physics. Uh, this is the website, and I'll take questions now. Thank you. I didn't find that very dark. In fact, I found that very illuminating. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Claude, you mentioned that uh, that the the effects of the uh, Russian Revolution during the early 90s, um, you know, had a devastating effect on their research. So I wanted to ask you what the current state of the uh, Russian research on torsion is. And also you mentioned that there uh, were these torsion generators, and I wanted to ask you if those are available for purchase either in Russia or, or elsewhere. Sure. There are a couple of Russians here who may have, or people of Russian extraction, who may have better information than I do. My own observation is that after three or four years of a flood of these papers coming out from 91 until 94 or so, they began drying up. The, 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 the flood uh, dried up, and um, I would just speculate that I, I was actually involved in some defense work at the time where I was interacting with uh, Russian scientists in other areas, but I saw some of these same phenomena happen in several different fields, and I would say that our response was probably very disappointing to uh, Russians who were idealistic, who expected we would be so happy that they're now a free society, would respond in kind, and we didn't. And so I think that there was a... a after the rapprochement, there was a separation again, and I think that uh, today there's actually, um, there's some, uh, on the internet, some attacks against some articles like this, and there's some political things that go on. So that's, that's probably closed up a lot. Um, th there are devices, there's a simple device uh, that's called the Comfort M, which basically spins little magnets around. My book describes this device. It's about $1,000. If you t I did email and talk to the man who makes these things. Uh, his response was not encouraging. He s I said, well, there are these different ways of measuring it. Can I, can I measure some of the effects directly? He said, yes, if you're a psychic. <laughs> he, he was evasive. However, there are some published papers where people use ex this exact device uh, and get measurable effects. My book describes uh, some of those effects. Um, I know uh, Sue... Sue Bentov, I think, published a paper or two using this device. And um, one of the effects you can use with this device when you pass these torsion waves from the little generator through alcohol into distilled water, run it for a while, the distilled water begins taking on some of the properties of the alcohol. So it's, it's a very interesting, it's related to homeopathy, obviously. So there's some interesting aspects there. But again, I don't, I would not warranty it, okay, so. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Very interesting talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I've been involved uh, <coughs> for quite a few years in, in issues of key and how to measure key, but measuring it in, in human terms. Yes. And uh, for example, if you don't, ha you don't have to go further than this room to see how the key content of this room has gone up as a discussion has got more exciting. And, and there is a simple way of, of actually measuring that. Uh, that I learned at the Pranic Healing School in, in Rome. And uh, uh, the, the point is that your aura gets uh, broader as you get more intellectually excited. So uh, one way of detecting that, if I can get somebody to hold this microphone, can you hold the microphone? <laughs> is that if, if you, if you uh, imagine that you have, well, you have chakras in your palm. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you bring them together, you run into <laughs> so, so you, you have, uh, 
you're trying to estimate the key, uh, the key level in the room, so you, you actually bring your hands together until you feel a slight pressure, uh, and that is uh, a, an indication of the degree of, uh, of expansion of your aura. All right, now you start a bit wider out than that because it's actually very high. Now, when we started this, this discussion, it was, it, was like, it was like that. Now it's like that because this room is full of, of key, and I can actually detect small particles of key floating in the room. So all I'm saying is that you can do a lot uh, with your own body yep. if you know... Right, thank you. Yeah, well, I think one of the challenges for for us who are on the borderline between the two fields, the Western and the Eastern, uh, is to get more acceptance of this energy, and part of that is to find objective means of measuring it. Uh, certainly, th something like the GDV, which is a, um, a gas discharge visualization system uh, from Karatkov in Russia, uh, which is basically a Kirlian phot photography system, but it appears to be correlated with your aura, and there's been a, a lot of studies he has done to show that it does seem to correlate with the physiological states of a person. So I, I think we're just sort of, it's, it's a real fr new frontier now, how we can measure these energies objectively. And that's, I think, the next challenge to be, to be addressed. Okay, uh, yeah, I wanted to know the time that you mentioned, that 13, 30 hours or whatever. Uh, the time of day, 13.5 hours yeah, sidereal. Know, is it's, that at all points on the planet? Or it, it's, that, is a, that is a time that astronomers would be able to explain to you. It's basically it's star time. It's what stars are overhead at that moment. It's the constellation Virgo. It's a particular part of the constellation Virgo. Well, it, I guess it would be, well, no, it, it's, it's, it would be, the, it would be the, the whatever's overhead. It's whatever's overhead, and, and, and you get the effect wh when it's overhead. Wait, I, I, although Claude may be in star time. We're in, <laughs> we are in Colorado time, and we have to move forward. We're out of time. Thank we're you. out of time. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Claude.